Come and grab it! Come and grab it! Okay, I'm calling, tell him I'm calling Governor Abbott over. Governor Abbott, yes, Governor Abbott is headed our way, and we, uh, we'd like to ask him a few questions. What the substance, what the substance of that interview was. who caused the chaos of the border needed to be here. It just so happens he's two years at about $20 billion too late. He needs to step up and, and take swift action, uh, including uh, reimbursing the state of Texas for the money that we spent, but providing more resources for the federal government to do its job. Also, this is for nothing but for show unless he begins to enforce the immigration laws already that exist in the United States of America that are contained in the letter that are provided to the president today. How did the president respond to you? He said he wanted to work with us on it. He was cordial. You expect to meet with him personally after this? We'll see what happens. Here's the deal. He's never called me to talk to me about the immigration issue. Now I've provided him a letter that provides tangible, concrete solutions that will stop illegal immigration. And I expect him to call to me, and that's what Secretary Mayorkas also said. The president also, also announced earlier in the week some changes to, to policy, to immigration policy. Are you satisfied with those changes? <laughs> Th those changes uh, will probably do nothing more than entice more illegal immigration. You have to implement the policies in my letter to stop illegal immigration and to begin on the process of what he wants to work on. Uh, but that, that fir first starts with d detaining those who are here illegally, as opposed to letting them go on an amnesty program, uh, it means deporting those who cross the border illegally between the points of entry. It means doing what the federal courts have ordered him to do, uh, which is to implement the Remain in Mexico policy as well as the Title 42 policy, and going back and continuing to build the border wall in the state of Texas using the taxpayer money already dedicated to building that border wall. Would you encourage them to keep Title 42 in place? Not only do I encourage it, we were part of the lawsuit forcing the federal governments to require him to do it. It's more than encouragement. He is required as president by the laws to maintain Title 42 in place and enforce it. Will you ask for more money to be sent to Texas to be hand to handle this unprecedented uh, One hundred percent. Texas desperately needs more money. I know the Republicans in the U.S. House have committed to providing Texas the money that we need. We just finished over the past two years spending $4 billion of Texas taxpayer dollars for Texas to fill the gap caused uh, by the Biden administration. We're starting a session this next week uh, on uh, that we will add another four billion dollars uh, to secure the border. You continue busing migrants to other cities. We are not just Texas, but the city of El Paso, the go governor of Colorado, uh, governors of other states, and leaders of other communities. We are removing migrants from our communities because we don't have the capability of handling them. Self-declared sanctuary cities with massive resources like in New York, Chicago, Washington, D.C. They have the capacity to deal with this far more than El Paso, but even far more than Del Rio and Eagle Pass and all the other tiny communities along the border that are being overwhelmed by the president's illegal uh, uh, policies that, uh, that uh, 
are turning this into an open border situation. Do you mind if I ask you what's in the letter? Sure. Well, what, what, what's it? What's in the letter is I, I start by telling him uh, that you know he's uh, two years and about twenty billion dollars too late, and then I I, I urge him in the letter to see the real chaos. What everybody here may already know, and that is that there were thousands of migrants sleeping on the streets in El Paso that have been cleaned up in the past few days. And I ask him to go see the areas where we have these mass migration crossings and go visit uh, with the people who own property and live on the border whose lives have been totally disrupted. And then I said, you, have, you Mr. President, you have a job to do. Uh, and that is to enforce the immigration laws already on the books and outline five ways in that letter of what it can do right now without any new law having to be passed. What are they? Uh, num number one uh, is to detain anybody who comes into this country illegally uh, for the removal process uh, and not engage uh, in this uh, massive amnesty program of letting people go wherever they may go. Uh, number two. Uh, is to uh, restart the deportation process that ICE is already authorized to do uh, to remove from our country anybody who comes here illegal. Number three is to stop people from violating U.S. law by crossing across the border between the ports of entry. Then I say uh, he must follow what the federal courts have told him to do, uh, and that is to enforce Title 42 and enforce the Rebanda Mexico policy. Uh, and then the last one uh, was to use the taxpayer money already appropriated to build the border wall in Texas. Thank you all very much. Thank you so much, Mr. Governor. Well, there you have it. Uh, the governor was able to talk to us and have an entire conversation with us, answering several questions, uh, precisely referring to the letter that he wrote to President Biden pointing out five different policy changes that he wants made so that we stop at least trim down the migration of the, the number of migrants that are coming across our borders. And you just mentioned just how bad the situation has gotten on the streets of El Paso. Uh, he also wants to extend Title 42, doesn't want him to end it.